This is something you put inside your mouth at least twice a day to avoid any dentist visits. But it's definitely not an apple. What is it? That's right, a toothbrush. Perhaps while brushing your teeth, you may have wondered before how toothbrushes are made, but then the thought soon fled your mind. But today, we're going to find out how are toothbrushes made. So, without any further ado, let's dive right in. Selecting the Raw Materials Although the toothbrush can be dated as far back as 3500 BC, it has evolved dramatically over time into the manual and electric toothbrush we use today. For example, the ancient Egyptians fashioned twigs and leaves into crude dental tools to clean their teeth as long ago as 3000 BC. Similarly, the other cultures, such as the Greeks, Romans, and Indians, also cleaned their teeth with small twigs. And by the 15th century, the Chinese had created a more sophisticated toothbrush, complete with a brush attached to a handle. Then, a century later, toothbrushes fashioned out of silver were a common sight amongst the English nobility. Even in the early 1900s, the material for toothbrushes was still not as sophisticated as it is today. The bristles were generally made of Siberian hog hair, which sounds not only disgusting, but also quite rough on the gums. But a couple of decades later, substantial changes were made as companies started mass producing soft bristled toothbrushes. Nowadays, the raw materials required for toothbrush making are simple and effective. The three primary materials used in the process are polypropylene, polyethylene, and nylon. Most toothbrushes are made of plastics that require energy to be synthesized. It forms the plastic handle and is usually made from a type of plastic called copolyester. This is a durable material that can withstand the effects of mint oil on most plastics and is also safe for toothpaste. Secondly, the bristles are made of nylon, specifically Nylon 6. Interestingly, nylon bristles have been around since the 1930s. Nylon is a synthetic fiber that is very strong and flexible, and it's an excellent choice for toothbrush bristles because it doesn't degrade or break down in water or with the types of ingredients usually found in toothpaste. After all, who wants to buy a new toothbrush every other day? Although Nylon 4 is compostable in the right conditions, most manufacturers will opt for Nylon 6, which is not. These bristles are trimmed and polished to a uniform height, and once they are shaped and rounded, the toothbrush is ready to be packaged. Today, toothbrushes are produced in many shapes, sizes, and colors, but the basic mechanism behind producing them is pretty much the same, so let's get to that. Molding the plastic handles. The first step in the manufacturing process is the formation of the plastic body. The life of a toothbrush starts as little plastic pellets. These tiny plastic balls are placed in a vacuum that sucks them up through a metal tube into an injection mold machine. This melts the pellets into a malleable dough and the melted plastic is injected into a steel mold that imprints little holes in which the bristles will be fastened in the next stage of the production process. The mold includes the handle as well as the head of the toothbrush. Now that we're done with making the plastic body of the toothbrush, it's time to add another essential piece to it. Making the rubber grips. Rubber grips are excellent to hold on to while brushing your teeth. So for this purpose, the factory will now melt colored rubber pellets. Once sufficiently heated, the liquid rubber is piped into the mold with the toothbrush handles. After that, the rubber is pressed firmly onto the plastic handles so it can form a grip on it. And there you have it, a toothbrush that you can grip well so it won't just drop out of your hand and into the sink. Besides rubber, another material may be used to produce a different type of grip. For example, a semi-clear plastic provides a much softer and pliable hold, which is why it's called the gummy brush. Remember the texture and feel of gummy candies? That's how these types of toothbrushes feel in your hand. All right. Now, let's head over to the main component of the toothbrush that gets the job done, the bristles. Making and inserting nylon bristles. The modern toothbrush with soft nylon bristles was the first type of toothbrush to ever be mass produced. According to dentists, soft bristles are a necessary component of an effective toothbrush. So how are they made? Well, nylon fibers are needed for this step a robotic arm folds them over and puts them into place automatically. 
so the placement is exceptionally even and accurate. And in the blink of an eye, the bristles are fed into the holes made in the head of the toothbrush handle previously. They are attached to the core of the toothbrush with tiny metal staples. After the bristles have been positioned perfectly in place, the body and bristles of the toothbrush are put through a machine that trims the bristles into a uniform length. At this stage, the manufacturer may choose to diversify the toothbrush in different ways. Let's take an example. The machine may cut in a V-shape pattern to create a toothbrush that is more suitable for people who wear braces. It is quick work because a machine can fill 900 holes per minute with extreme precision. This automated system is much more efficient and incredibly fast. Another advantage is that the process is incredibly hygienic since the robotic device rarely touches the bristles. Now the bristles may have been inserted, but they also need to be refined and polished further. So let's head over to the next stage, polishing the bristles. For this purpose, we will use sharp blades to evenly and precisely trim the bristles to about the same length. After that, another set of blades will take over to sculpt the different edges and types of bristle style. For example, the Reach toothbrush by Johnson & Johnson includes bristles in a zigzag design. While Colgate offers an angled brush such as the Rippled Bristles model designed to reach the plaque trap between teeth, Gillette has also featured taller, contoured bristles in their Oral-B plaque remover that also massage the gums. So basically, this is an essential step as it determines how the bristles must be designed to fit the toothbrush model in production. For example, rotating discs are coated with diamond dust, which acts as a mild abrasive to sand the edges of the bristles. This provides a very refined finish. Different finishes have different cleaning effects, after all. Coloring the toothbrush. Now the next stage of production is the coloring of the toothbrush. You may have observed that your toothbrush handle or bristles are colored differently with various designs. While some bristles are blue, others are green, making for a neat aesthetic to make your mornings all the more enjoyable. So how is that achieved during the manufacture of the toothbrush? Well, the machine used here knows exactly where one color goes and not the other. So if you like a nifty two-tone brush, this is where the magic happens. Modern toothbrushes usually come in various colors, patterns, and designs, but most companies choose to paint toothbrushes in a solid color. A standard model of the manual toothbrush is used widely, but the decorative design of the toothbrush has steadily gained traction over the years. More often, manufacturers are producing intricately designed toothbrushes with various characters or patterns. It's time for some quick spot check and packaging now. Quality check. The factory will conduct spot checks for quality assurance by pulling a toothbrush off the assembly line. Here, a robot arm will pull on the nylon bristles to check whether they are correctly inserted and won't come out when pressure is exerted. After confirming that the bristles are secure enough, the toothbrush passes the check, and so does the rest of the production. Now these handy little dental tools are cleared for sale at last. And with that, the brushes are ready to be packaged and delivered to people. Packaging. A robotic system is used for packaging toothbrushes into cardboard or plastic containers. Then, the labels for the manufacturing company are attached to the packaging. They provide product information such as recommendations for usage and bristle hardness. Also, if this toothbrush brand has the approval of the American Dental Association, the seal of acceptance will also be stamped on the container. The American Dental Association actually tests hundreds of toothbrushes each year, and only those that meet their standards are awarded the ADA seal of acceptance. Anyway, once that is all done, the packaged toothbrushes are bundled into larger shipping boxes or crates and transported to distributors all over the world. Off to maintaining pearly smiles everywhere. Click on one of the two videos on your screen right now. We'll catch you guys in the next one.